Hi, Robin Belmont here. We're going to be looking at the pair T test, also called the dependent sample or correlated sample T test. Um, we'll be doing the analysis in SPSS, R Commander, and R. And this does not contain an explanation, just how to do it. An explanation, see my PDF documents at the above website address, or go to the Keith Bauer websites on YouTube, which are excellent for explaining various things, including the pair T test. Hi, for example, we're going to use um, an example from my document, document 6, assessing a single mean. If we go to the section, pair t-test, we'll see there's described there a situation where a particular abdominal muscle training program increases possibly the number of curls a person can do. Curls are trying to sit up. So what we have is variation between an individual, pre-post-test. So Subject number one, they could do 25 to begin with, 27 at the end. Subject number five, could do seven at the beginning, and nine at the end. So we've got a different score there, which we're going to create first in SPSSS. So let's look how we do this in SPSSS. Here is our data in SPSSS. To create our new variable, the difference variable, we have to transform compute variable, type in a new name, I'll just call it difference, D I F F. Then I've already typed in pre minus post. We can actually do it the other way around if we wanted to. It doesn't really make much difference. Click OK. And it comes off with a window telling that it's done. Let's go back to our data set. We can see there. So they can do two more because we did it the other way around to what we probably should have done. So they can do two more. They've improved by 10. They've improved by 1. No difference for that particular person. Improved by 2 there. Got worse by 1. Decreased. Perhaps they were ill the second time. Improved by 6. Improved by 1. Right. To actually carry out the analysis, which analyze, compare means. Paired samples t test. Click pre post. It doesn't matter which way around. We need a set of data. Both in together. OK. And there is our result. You can see pre the mean was 14, post the mean was 16. But notice the standard deviations and standard errors are quite large. We've got a small number of people as well, remember. So the mean difference is minus 2.6, which looking at the data the way around it is, it actually means plus 2.6. They improved by an average of 2.6, with standard deviation 3.6. There is a 95% confidence interval, that's the t-value, degrees of freedom and the significance value, the p-value. In R, it's a very simple procedure. First load the R commander library. SPSSS, we don't need to, but we will do. We'll call it my data frame. Just check to see if we've imported the right data. Yep, so two columns. Then simply statistics, means, pair t test. Notice that we can't choose the other options because we don't have enough variables, or the variables are not the right type. Pair t test, select pre, post, or the other way around. We can have two sided p value, we we'll stick to 95% confidence interval. OK, and there is our result.
exactly the same as before. G of minus 2.04. G is a 7. P value this time instead of 0 0.08 it's 0 0.0796. So it doesn't make much difference. And there's a confidence interval. And there's the mean difference which we had before. When we use our commander, basically it generates the R code underneath every time we choose a dialog box. So all we did when we choose the dialog box for the pair T test was generate the R code. If we look here, that is the R code for a pair T test. It puts in one vector of data, the next vector of data, so there's going to be two for pre and post, and then it uses the word pair equals true. Notice it's all uppercase the true. If you look at my PDF document, I give you an example there, typing the data directly into R, and then t test, pre test, post test, pair equals true. We get exactly the same result again. So we looked at the paired sample t test which is also called the dependent sample t-test or the correlated sample t-test because it takes into account the correlation between the two measures the pre and post in this instance you'll notice in the output we had a correlation measure as well we used SPSSS, R commander and also we did look at how we could have directly in put the information into R if you want more information look at my PDF or Listen to Keith Bauer, who's an excellent speaker on YouTube. Bye.